Hey everyone, welcome to this weekend's video update. Hope, every, hope everybody had a good week of trading. Let's get into checking out the stocks, check out the portfolio, I'll give you an update on day trading, and we will call it a week. So, uh, what a what a uh, what a week. I mean, um, just in the matter of a week. I mean, last week it looked like the market was falling, and then now ripped right back up to all-time highs in the S&P. Now the, the NASDAQ has not fared quite so well. It's still well under its, uh, its all-time highs, but if we look at the year-to-date percentage, um, you know, NASDAQ is still positive on the year. It's up 2% on the year. Uh, you look at SPX, SPX is up about 6.5% on the year. And like I said, cracked through its all-time highs. So back up and ready to rock and roll. Now, I, I would think that we still continue to see a little bit less strength in tech in the NASDAQ versus some of these financials and travel and some of these other uh, sectors that we've seen some strength in this week. So I think we get a little bit of a continuation of that going forward. All right, so let's jump into the, actually, before we jump into the alerts, just quick update on the day trading. Uh, on the Mighty 90s, booked 964 on just four trades. Did not trade Friday, and we will not be live streaming on Monday either. So just four days this week. Uh, pairs trade, booked uh, 845 on three trades. And then on the runners, booked 907 on 26 trades. So all in all, for the week, uh, a little over $2,700, 2716 And uh, year-to-date now on our day trade, 175 since we started tracking back in August, a little over 53,000. So <clears throat> continuing to do well there. Um, all right, let's jump into the alerts for the week, starting with uh, the beginning of the week, Mark, March 8th. Uh, first trade we did was an opening trade in Goog. So we put out an iron duck, just looking for different, you know, big stocks to to add some uh, add some trades in, just to diversify. So we're not just doing all indices with our ducks. By the way, I'm uh, talking a little bit quiet. I've, there's someone sleeping in the next room, so I'm trying not to wake them. It's 5:30 a.m. on Saturday morning, March 5, uh, March 13th. Uh, anyway, here's our here's our Google duck. You can see price is still in the beak. Still got a chance for it to come back into the duck head. So we'll hold on to that. And that expires next Friday on 3:20. Next trade was an expiration in SPX, so we let this one expire. This one uh, expired right in our duck head, booked max profit of 6.35. So nice, uh, nice duck head in SPX. Uh, we did a open another weekly double calendar in SPX. This one, uh, you know, we like to open these with kind of six to eight days typically. But implied volatility was contracting nicely, so we extended one day. So we put nine days in the front week, 13 in the back. And remember, these are the AM options. So this is a situation where we have the opportunity to potentially let these front week options expire and then uh, get a potential move in the back week the next day to, uh, to book even more profit. But we'll see what happens. It depends on where price is. I'll update you guys on if, if we're going to close that out early or go ahead and Try to uh, squeeze some more profit out of that one. And I'll go to uh, SPX on the platform here in just a minute. We've got a couple other SPX trades. Uh, Netflix did an opening trade. This one, a Vertigo. I uh, did this one once nine days in the front, 16 in the back. As I mentioned here, the Valley uh, had a little bit higher percentage uh, than I like on these Vertigos. I think it was like 34%. But what I liked about this is, A, Netflix is a fairly volatile stock, and if you put these price slices to where the break even is uh, on the charts and just kind of get a perspective of where price could go, uh, price just has to basically breach through this to the upside or breach uh, through this to the downside, and it, and it has nine days to do that. And so, of course, we could get in a period of you know serious consolidation, and it could just chop around in between these, but I think it's a pretty good chance that uh, with, with the volatility going on <clears throat> that we see Netflix rip through or rip down. And so I'm uh, anticipating us booking a profit on that one. And then, and the other reason I didn't do like a, I looked at SPY, I looked at a bunch of other stocks <clears throat> to do a vertigo. And the, uh, just the put skew in the indices was a little bit heavy. So gave a little bit, you know, whereas, you know, in, in Netflix, 
you've got a, a pretty balanced P and L curve, where with with uh, you know SPY it's kind of really heavy down to the downside, and that's because of that heavy put skew. So that's a, that's another reason I chose Netflix in a stock over uh, SPY. Uh, GS we did we had a long call diagonal in GS, and we closed two of our three. We had three contracts. We towed, we closed two thirds of that. Two of our three contracts booked over sixty percent on those. And then um, on Friday, I'll go ahead and jump to it as our last trade on Friday, we went ahead and closed the remaining one and booked over 100% profit on that one. So booked over 400 bucks on that, uh, on that Goldman Sachs long call diagonal. And this is what I was talking about is that rotation into financials and travel stocks, uh, whereas the rest of the market was having some downside. You know, these financials have just been on a rip, roar, and tear with uh, interest rates going up, potential inflation, helping banks uh, in their balance sheets. So uh, you can see what happened here. Uh, I think we got in right uh, is this on this little pullback, or maybe it was this little pullback here, and it took a little bit of heat one day and then just ripped up. So nice trade in GS. Uh, ES, uh, it had an iron duck in ES. We don't do a lot of uh, iron ducks in the futures, but there's some talk uh, about uh, a couple of folks really like doing the futures on the iron duck, so we just did one in our portfolio. So instead of using SPY or SPX, we did ES uh, just to show you how it kind of works, how, how it's managed. Uh, to give you a little bit of perspective, ES is five times big, five times larger than SPY, and it's half the size of SPX. So it's uh, a good a good size portion. So we did two. So basically we did something that would be equivalent to doing one SPX. And uh, price ran higher. We ended up closing this out, booking beak profit on the trade. So we we're out of our ES duck. SPX, uh, weekly double calendar. So we opened up another weekly double calendar. Remember we did our first one when it was at nine days in the front week. Waited a couple days. Implied volatility contracted some more. So we added another one with seven days. So let's go to SPX and check out our positions there. So it looks like a Pac-Man ghost if you combine them, but uh, if we separate them here, so we've got 38.20, 39.50, 38.20, 39.50. Okay, so here's, here's one. So you got price, you know, we're up about 82 bucks, kind of hanging out in the upper end of the range. And then we've got this one here. These both have the same expiration cycle. This one's a little bit left of center. So we've got a lot of room for the price to kind of ping pong around in over the next few days next week. And we'll probably take one of these off on Thursday, one of them on Friday. Remember, it's the AM options. And so we will we'll make a decision as we get closer to expiration <clears throat> as far as when we, when we take those off. Next trade, SPX weekly double calendar. So this is one that expired Friday that we had on. Uh, price, price moved higher. I was hoping for a little bit of downside to get back into range to book a little bit profit, but price just pushed through our break even. So we had to exit and, and close that one out with, uh, with one day to expiration. Amazon opened an iron duck. Again, just kind of diversifying out of uh, just indice iron ducks. Did this one with 14 days to expiration. So if we take a look at Amazon. Uh, nice big range here. It was a little under 85% we put it on, uh, but pretty close as far as our pop goes. Uh, but Amazon, um, obviously getting hit with a, with a lot of the tech, but uh, get, getting a little bounce. So we'll see if we, we get a continuation higher or, you know, obviously we would love to get a little bit of a move lower uh, towards expiration and uh, hit another deck head. So that's the plan in Amazon. And then I already mentioned GS. So those are all of our alerts. Let's take a look at the rest of our positions. We've got a, uh, a long put vertical in ES with that uh, up move this week. Prices moved out of range on that one. We're holding that for that short delta exposure. Speaking of short delta, we're a little less than one to one on our short delta uh, uh, exposure versus our, uh, our short delta versus our theta ratio when you beta weight it to SPY. Uh, so I like where we're at there. Uh, gold, we've got this iron condor, we're up a couple hundred bucks, looking for about 30-40% of max profit on that one. ZB, we've got this short strangle in ZB that we've been managing. Uh, price is pretty close to center there, just giving it more time to theta decay. Uh, Apple, 
We've got this long put vertical as a short delta play, looking for some more downside to benefit that. Uh, delta Airlines, so this is one, uh, another long call uh, vertical, uh, again, kind of looking at that the travel industry and the financials as, as potential leaders here in the, in the short term. Uh, Delta Airlines up 3% today. Now this one we put on and we got caught, in, we, we put it in on back here, we got caught on this big flush, but it's rallied all the way back, back up to, you know, new highs here. And so, you know, now we're, we're up about, I think prices right here, we're up about $100 on this trade. Uh, we've got about 357 is our debit pay, that's our max risk. So if we can, uh, if we can make another little push into next week, this expires Friday, uh, we'll try to book 50, 75, maybe even 100% profit, uh, assuming Delta doesn't uh, fall apart. DE, this is uh, another long put vertical. Man, this one has just been a thorn in my side. It's a very small position, very small part of our portfolio, but DE's just been super strong. And so, let me go to one year daily. And look at this rally, man. Um, so if I zoom in here. Uh, you know, I, I don't mind keeping this because, you know, at some point this is going to see some downside, but man, it just, it just keeps, keeps pulling back and rocking up. So, uh, would have been a beautiful buy the dipper, uh, but we are, we'll continue to hold this for short Delta. We'll probably roll this next week. Uh, DIA, another short Delta play. Uh, this is a short, uh, short call vertical. You can see with this week's price movement, price busted out of our range, but still holding it. Uh, for that short delta, I mentioned Goog, we've got that iron duck, IWM, we've got a long put vertical, another one of our short delta plays, uh, Lowe's, so this is one, this is a, a long put diagonal, uh, this is one where uh, Lowe's saw this weakness, caught this little bounce, we got this flush lower and we closed out half of our position at a really nice profit, we were holding the other half for another potential flush, and lows just really ripped higher. So now we're down on our, our last piece. So we're still profitable on this trade, but um, we need a little bit of a little bit of a flush lower into next week. Actually, we got a couple weeks here. So we'll continue to hold this closer to expiration, see if we can't get uh, a move lower in lows. Netflix, I mentioned our vertigo QQQ. We've got this uh, short call vertical here. We're up about 200 bucks since our last roll. Uh, just holding this for that short delta exposure. SMH, we've got this short strangle, which has been adjusted into a straddle. We're up a little over a thousand, or about a thousand bucks since we did our last adjustment. Just waiting for some more theta to decay. I mentioned SPX. Twitter, this is another long, uh, long call diagonal that we got in looking for potential higher prices. Uh, Twitter busted out after earnings, and on this pullback, we were looking for a continuation. It started to, we had a nice profit, and then this thing just got flushed with the rest of tech. Uh, but we'll we'll still hold it. We've got uh, we've got till Friday on this one. So if we get a little up movement in Twitter on the week, hopefully we can scratch that one. XLK, our last position is a short uh, a long put vertical, another short delta play, uh, up about seventy bucks on this one since we did our last roll. Just looking for some more downside to benefit that piece. So those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. Hope everybody has a good rest of your weekend. And we will talk to you next week. Remember, uh, no live stream on Monday for you day traders, uh, but we will be doing alerts and in the community. So look forward to seeing you then. Cheers.